guys, this is Ghost Host, and I'm finally doing it. It is New Year's Eve, and this is the Top 10 Marvel Legends of 2020. This is probably my first year I've ever gotten enough Legends to actually do a Top 10 list. But here I am, making a Top 10 list. Now, before I get started, I just want to say this is probably the worst year ever. For everything but Marvel Legends. Since we got some pretty banger figures this year. And some really good ones. So, honestly, everything in this year sucked besides Marvel Legends. So, before I get started with the actual top 10, I want to talk about some honorable mentions. Which I will show you here. First is the Super Scroll Bath Wave She Hulk. Let's see if I can stand her up. Um, some of you may be saying, why is she on the list? She came out in 2019. That's because she literally came out days before, before the new year. And that's when I picked her up personally. That's when I bought her. So she basically came out she, this year. She was, they were planning to release her 2020. They released her a week early, the same with Vulture. But I don't think he was good enough to actually get an honorable mention since I wanted to put these ones on. Although, honestly, I'll, I'll give him a little honorable mention. Vulture was a pretty good figure. But this one is She-Hulk. She came with a decent Build-A-Figure piece for the Super Scroll, which I couldn't complete. I'm still a little sick. Um, she's a pretty good figure. I don't have any other She-Hulk. I don't have a classic one, but this one does... Just, it's a good figure, alright? So, another honorable mention is Storm, the white outfit. Another one who was technically released in 2019, but she was never stocked in my area until this year, only a m month or two ago. So, that's when I got her, and that's why she's on the list. All the other figures that will be on the actual top 10 list will be figures released this year. That's why I wanted to put her on the honorable mentions, because she's technically not a figure from this year. But yeah, they released the black variant too this year, which I do not have, because I wanted the white one. So, that's why she's on the list, because she does have a variant that was released this year. She was only stocked in my area, and only found on websites in my area for shipping this year so that's when I got her that's when she's on the list finally a figure that was actually released this year is the Marvel Legends Gwen Stacy or Mary Jane I prefer the Gwen Stacy head on her I just had the Mary Jane head on for uh, photos I was taking because I like to do um like action figure posing and stuff i like to take pictures of that that's why i buy a whole bunch of accessories for him this figure is really nice we it's been a long time coming till we got a gwen stacy and finally we have one um they captured the the outfit really well so i think this is probably the best figure of this year that isn't going to be on the list because well she's a really valued figure and Honestly, your spider, spidey complexion, I can't speak, because I feel sick. Your spidey, your Spider-Man action figures collection is not complete without Gwen Stacy or a Mary Jane. So this is kind of like a must-have. I picked her up on Hasbro Pulse, because I could not find her at GameStop, just like the Spider-Man. But I, I ordered Spider-Man months before the pre-order, like, got... Where you couldn't buy it anymore. I bought I bought Spider-Man like the day he came out. Alright. So. Let's get started. Number 10. Alright, so number 10 on my list is... The Marvel Legends 30th Anniversary. Um... Or whatever the anniversary was. Marvel Legends Anniversary 2-Pack Pyro. I picked him up 
the same day he came out uh, on pre-order. I had to wait till like November. And when he came out, I noticed that he was in GameStop for $5 cheaper. So I got a little mad by that, but it's fine because I ended up still getting him. And honestly, I think the figure's really nice. I've only seen him put on like one or two other top 10 lists from other YouTubers. And watching those videos was like swaying my opinion a little bit. But eventually I just decided I'm going to choose what I want on this list. And on here is Pyro. We haven't gotten a Pyro since the Toy Biz era, which, well, admittedly isn't the best figure. But honestly, it's pretty good for Toy Biz. Um... I don't like the wrinkles on this guy's head, though. But honestly, it's fun. He came with a lot of accessories. He did come with an extra head and two flame effects, which I really commend. I really do like getting accessories and extra pieces for, like, articulation and stuff with my figures. So this guy was honestly a good, bu a good buy for me, because I really do like getting extra little goodies with my figures. And this guy feel it and he um he's also an x-men villain which i do not have a lot of and i really needed one so i got pyro all right moving on number nine all right number nine on my list is carnage carnage came out in the uh venom pool bath wave quite a while ago maybe a few months which is where i pre-ordered him and honestly, I really like him. More detail than I expected when I pre-ordered him, so that's really cool. The sculpt is amazing. It's entirely new sculpt. Just everything is new, so that's amazing. He comes with a cool back thing to, like, tendrils you plug into his back, which is really cool, like the old carnages. And, um, sadly he didn't come with anything else, like extra hands or an extra head. But honestly, I think that's fine. This figure is really good, and I think they rocked it out of the park with this one. Moving on to the next one. Number eight. All right, so number eight is Kang the Conqueror. I really like Kang. I think he's a pretty cool supervillain. For those of you who don't know, he's from the 40th century, and he came to the past to conquer our time. Um, I picked him up in store because I don't think he was on pre-order. Or maybe he was. I didn't check for him. I just waited till he came out in store, which was not long after he was revealed. So that was pretty cool. Um, not really much to say about him. I do really like him. His accessory is cool. I just wish he would have came with more. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think Carnage should have been higher, but I'm already starting the list. And I did find myself playing with Kang and moving him around more than Carnage. So that's points for that. He is really cool. He came with some extra hands, which is always nice. Maybe he sh they should have added more detail, but... One reason why he's on this part of the list is because no pegs anywhere. There is no pegs on this figure, not on the elbows, not on the knees. Which I think is awesome. And it's great to see Hasbro finally removing those ugly pegs. Alright, we're gonna move on. Number seven. Alright, number seven on our list is Gambit. This is his retro carded Gambit figure, and it's his more Jim Lee inspired 90s design. I do not have the old Gambit, so that's why I picked him up. I really wanted to gambit my collection, and honestly, I'm blown away with this figure. His accessories are nice. Definitely worth the $20 you pay for. He came with a, like, a card, a card-throwing hand, a card-holding hand, and a staff, along with a completely new head sculpt and new colors, which I think is really great of Hasbro to do. And it's really great to give us, like, more options, considering that anyone who missed... Like, the old Rogue or the old Gambit was basically screwed unless they wanted to pay 30 to 70 bucks. It's cool to see that they're re-releasing these figures as, like, with new, newer designs. Or technically, older designs, but 
it's cool to see that they're re-releasing these figures for collectors who didn't get a chance to get them the first time. And honestly, I don't see any of the old collectors complaining, so that's pretty nice to see, too. I was going to put him below Kang, but I decided after just holding the two figures in my hand that Gambit definitely deserved to be higher than Kang. Because you, you pay $20, you get more than what you got with Kang. Despite how there's only a few pegless joints, only on the elbows, I think that's fine. The articulation is great. The paint apps are for the most part great. The accessories are amazing. And it's not the old hair. He has a new hairstyle, which is way better than the old one. Alright, we gotta move on to number six. Number six. Number six, without a doubt, has to go to the Walgreens exclusives, Moon Knight. This is one of the figures I'm most proud of, especially his review. I really think that his review was probably when the modern style for my reviews started. And I got his review up before Shardimus Prime was even able to make his Moon Knight review. I was really excited about that, and... My figure was actually on the search term page. If you searched up Marvel Legends Moon Knight review, it was actually there if you just scrolled down a little bit. So th I thought that was really cool because I was able to get my vi my video up before like three of the YouTubers I watch, including Shardimus Prime, who's basically the reason I even started a YouTube channel. That and another YouTuber, which I won't talk about here since he's not related to this. But, um... Seriously, and I'm really proud that I actually found him since, well, he was a cool figure and I, I wanted him, but I wasn't going to pay resale prices for him. And I wasn't going to go out of my way to find him. I was actually trying to find a different figure and I stumbled across him and I got him instead, which I, I think is really cool. I found him for a great price. He was only 20 because that's how much I sell them in store. He came with a lot of accessories. Really bang for your buck. You, if you see the rest of my review. I really like like to talk about what you get. Versus what you pay. Because that's a big deciding factor. In this list. And figures I buy. He gave you. I think two or three big moon meringues. As well as like three or six small ones. He gave you a staff, he has his cape, and he has an extra head, and I think it's some really good value. Honestly, I just can't stop talking about this figure sometimes. I am really proud that I was able to find him, and I'm just so glad I got him. Alright, moving on. Number five. Alright, number five is the Spider-Man Retro Series, Electro! We finally got uh, past the first five, and now we're on to the top five. And Electro had to be a part of it. For years, when I was in elementary and middle school, I was saving up, scraping up all my money, trying to save up for the um, Toy Biz Sinister Six box set Electro. And I could never afford him, because he was always super expensive. Then, here he is, in my high school years, for super cheap because it's a new figure i was able able to pre-order him and get him for my birthday so i thought that was really swell he honestly is much better than the toy biz version and because of his release if you want the toy biz version it's only going to be like 10 bucks what once was like one of the most expensive figures from the box set is now the cheapest so that's really cool to see what one figure's release can do to an entire box set's price. Um, he came with two extra hands, which have some pretty cool effects. He isn't one of the figures that's all bang for your bucky, and you get a whole bunch more than what you pay. But he is pretty nice. I've always wanted an Electro, and I need to complete my Sinister Six. So I, I just had to pick him up. You don't get a lot for what you pay, but for a single figure's release, I think he's pretty good. The color is nice. The paint apps are, for the most part, pretty damn good. You might have to watch out for the little rubber 
electric bolts um, bending a little bit. You might have to run them under hot water if you want them to like get them in the proper shape because they will come out bent sometimes. But I think with some heat, you can you can fix it. All right, so I'm gonna move on. Number four. All right, for number four on my list is another Spider-Man Retro Wave uh, figure. And another Sinister Six member, Mysterio. Judging by the four logo I put on that image, um, you're probably guessing it was a Fantastic Four figure. But nope, I just drew the image like that because, you know, Marvel. Um, Mysterio is a figure I've wanted longer than I've wanted an Electro for. And again, the Toy Biz option was cool, but still not affordable. Considering my um, financial status at the time, which was, I had no money. Because, how would a kid get money? But yeah, um, now that I'm old enough to where I can actually get money, I got him. He took much longer to pre-order. I pre-ordered him along with Spider-Man and all the other early uh, figures, like Green Goblin. And I had to wait till November to get him. Honestly, I don't know why his wait time was so long. But hey, I mean, it was all worth it in the end. The figure is really nice. Its colors are more of the 90s, the animated series colors, but with the design of the 60s style. But the colors still really pop. I much rather preferred it instead of the lizard uh, uh, Mysterio, which was super expensive still. So again... The same with Electro and Mysterio. They had an expensive Toy Biz counterpart and then an even more expensive Hasbro figure. So yeah, here it is. I got him for 20 bucks. He came with some cool mist effects, an extra head. So honestly, for $20, I think he was a pretty good price considering how much their other Electro was going for. The fish dome you can no longer see into. And I glued the cape to the body, and I did not put the head in, so I could just have the head separate. But I glued the cape to the body because, well, I wouldn't need to unmask this figure. I like him as is. And honestly, he's really nice. The mist effects and everything comes with perfectly worth what you pay. And honestly, I think he's a pretty good figure for the number four spot. Number three. Alright, for the number three spot is the retro... Uh, Spider-Man Retro Wave, Spider-Man, the final Retro Wave figure that's going to be on this list, well, Spider-Man Retro Wave, and he makes the number three spot. When I first got the figure, I was still planning to make the top ten, and I, he, I always thought he was going to be on the top, but after all, some other figures came out, which obviously have topped him, which I will get to later. So, he's here at the number three spot, which I thought he could not go lower than number three. No matter what, he had to be at least number three. So, here he is. One of the ones I anticipated the most this uh, this year, and one of the ones I waited for the most this year and was excited for the most. So, he probably would have been a bit higher, but... um. I don't think he came with enough, considering he was like... I know the most of the sculpt is new, but the paint apps for almost everybody's figures weren't done well. There's a whole bunch of paint mishaps. I'm pretty sure if you buy just multiple of these, if you look hard enough, you'll find a few. Also, he didn't come with wide open hands, so that was a bit of a hassle. Hasbro, why did you do that? And honestly, I think he should have came with, like, one of those web parts that they've been making. Like, maybe one of the Gamerverse web parts. Even the one that goes over the face. Just any of the uh, web things. Because it's rare that Hasbro gives, like, a Spider-Man webs. Which is his main ability. Like, he's always called the wall crawler or web slinger. And as of late, they haven't been adding in pieces that show off both of those abilities which is wall crawling and web slinging he doesn't get like accessories that show off that ability which i think i i think he should get but honestly i still really like him he's a really amazing figure definitely tops the pizza spider-man 
And before I got this figure, I was actually planning to get the McFarlane Spider-Man. But now I don't feel like I need him because I got this guy. Alright, um, moving on to number two. Number two. Alright, for the number two spot is a Marvel Legends Deluxe Classic War Machine. He was actually going to be number one, but I did a little bit of thinking, and I thought that another figure topped him in terms of, well, what you get versus what you pay. So, he's right here. The sculpt, as far as I'm concerned, is almost all new. There are a few pieces from the other Iron Man, which I think is these legs and maybe this arm, but it doesn't look like it. So, I think most of it's completely new. Um... What can I say? He's just an amazing figure. You paid 30 bucks and you got two thrusters, two uh, boat thrusters, two like smoke pumes, um, a minigun and a rocket launcher that go on his shoulders, an effect for the rocket launcher, and missiles you plug into that effect, a effect for the minigun, two smoking pieces for his uh, wrist mounted gun and then two firing pieces for his wrist mounted gun and an extra head oh my gosh you just got so much with this figure and all you had to pay was 30 which is ten dollars more than an average marvel legend but this guy is not only bigger than an average marvel legend but you also get way more accessories than an average marvel legend the paint ups are really good. I only noticed two mistakes, which are really small black dots on his face, which honest, honestly aren't even that noticeable. You have to actually look at his head to notice them. The sculpt is perfect. They added in a lot of extra detail all over his armor, which I think is just really cool. Alright, let's move on to number one. Number one. Finally. Okay, he fell. Finally, we're at number one. And as you can see, it goes to the Fantastic Four Retro Wave Doctor Doom. I am really just happy with this figure. Let me plug his cape back in. All right. As I think I said last uh, number with War Machine, he was going to get the number two spot, but I decided that he was worth more and meant more to me than War Machine. This figure you only paid $20 for. You got two books, two magic effects, an extra set of hands, a gun, and an ultimate nullifier. And he comes with this little piece right here for his shoulders. Honestly, his accessories are really cool as well, and he was cheaper. Honestly, I'm just really happy to have this Doctor Doom. I know I have the old one, but I honestly just love this one much, much more. And I think he was my favorite figure overall this year. As you can, as you could probably tell when I said number one when I had the card up. I was really excited to show you guys number one. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I made this list. So I could show you guys what I thought was the best figure this year. Um, as I should have said when the video started, that uh, this is all my opinion. Just don't don't get mad at me for having an opinion about Marvel Legends. If you have some figures you liked more, then just comment what your list would have been in the comments. I don't know, barely anybody watches my videos. So not, I don't think anyone's going to be commenting. But hey, I know at least two YouTubers who like do reviews subscribe to me, so that's a, that's cool. Maybe they might comment, and maybe they might tell me what their uh, top ten list was. But honestly, I'm really confident in my list, and I really, really just like what Hasbro, Hasbro put out this year. If I would have gotten more figures, I probably would have made it like a top 15, a top 20, because there was so many figures this year that came out, I feel should have gotten a spot on the list that I just didn't buy because I didn't have the money or I just couldn't get. Like, um, Havoc. 
I really wanted to see our whoever that one that came out the X Men from the strong guy pathway that everyone's talking about. Can't remember his name, but it wasn't Havoc. I I wanted to get him, but I prioritized other figures. I really wanted to get the um, two pack Storm, but I never had enough money for her when she was available. I really wanted to find Rogue, but I couldn't find her, so there were so many other figures I wanted to get, but the ones I got this year I'm really happy with and feel they deserve a spot on this list, and I think that this figure is probably one of or the best figure of 2020, especially the ones I have. This is prob This is the best, not probably, this is the best one that I have. But overall, this is probably one of the best. I do not have Deluxe Venom. I could have gotten him, but I got Gambit instead. Which I know some people will probably tell me was a dumb choice. But honestly, I already have a Venom. And I just don't really like the aesthetic of a giant monster Venom. Although, he is that is pretty cool. But yeah, this is the top 10, uh, well, actually not the top 10, uh, number 1 spot is Doctor Doom. He's a really cool figure, and if you get a chance to pick him up, I say do it. He, I don't think he's available on Hasbro Pulse anymore, but you can get him on Amazon, at least from the time I'm recording this. So yeah, that that's my list. If you have anything you want to say about the video, put it in the comments. If you like the video, like it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And this is my catchphrase. Um... If you're wondering why I have holy crap in all the video titles and stuff, it's so that YouTube doesn't put my video on YouTube Kids. Because I hate YouTube Kids. So yeah, holy crap, what a figure. And holy crap, what a top 10. See you guys later. Have a wonderful, amazing day. And a happy new year. Bye.